Join us. Support us. Join us. Support us. Just because the media is masses, we have dragged in law, we have brutal police action, and we have uh, the judiciary uh, working at the behest of the political leaders. Join us. She's a heartbreaker. I want to welcome into the studio a very beautiful young lady, Anna. Hi, Anna. Good morning. She shoved her shoulders <laughs> like that. You are. You're just cuter than a bug, and oh. I mean that uh, respectfully. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Anna is with the Deviation Diaries. I've been so looking forward to this interview all week. Tell me, what is Deviation Diaries? It's Yuba Sutter's. Yeah, well, it's actually the Deviation Diaries, but in order to make it more searchable, I added Yuba Sutter in there because we really are proud to be part of this area. Um, we're major history buffs, um, horror, culture, you know, with the films and everything like that. Amber's more of the horror film flick uh, junkie. Yeah. I'm more of the history buff. And we've got a lot of uh, kind of a bizarre history in this area, don't we? Oh, very. We've got one of the first serial killers. Um, yeah, Juan Corona. Everybody knows about Juan. Yeah. A lot of folks, in fact, I was just telling you, I got a uh, peach bag uh, from Juan Corona that said a property of Juan Corona when I was a teenager. Yeah, that's what, kind of what got me started with, with old Juan, is that everybody has a story that connects to the Juan Corona case. And one of the most fascinating things I found is that a lot of people don't know anything about the victims. And he had at least 25, and they believe that there's many more out there. Many believe that they were immigrant um, seasonal farm workers from Mexico. And the fact is, is that they were primarily white, two African Americans, and a white and Indian. And really? Yeah. We went and did the research, and we found that they actually have a mass grave for the victims out at Sutter Cemetery. And we did a piece on that. And try to identify as many of them as possible because some of them are unknown. You could think there are still uh, bodies out there? Oh, most definitely. So most definitely. We're gonna, for the next uh, couple of decades, we're going to be running into uh, the graves. Yeah. Um, I actually, um, I do home health for a living, and my client actually was good friends with Jack Sullivan, who owned the ranch at the time. And it was during a Sun Sweets prune uh, harvest, and it shut down everything at Sun Sweet. And so talking to her, I was like, wow, man, there's really a lot out there that that went untapped once I started researching and everything. They kind of just stopped. They're like, okay, how many times can you kill this guy with a death sentence? 25 is enough. And they kind of just stopped. And he's still, still alive, isn't he? He is. He's, I believe he's in Corcoran, and he's got dementia right now. I haven't so. heard that. He doesn't, he can't remember what he did. Yep, he just came up for parole not too long ago, and of course was denied, so. Uh, he's never did. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Well, we've got some other ones, uh, you know, people like uh, Dorothy Puente. Yeah, she, um, real famous serial killer, killed people for their social security checks over there in, I can't remember the exact street off the top of my head, but in um, downtown Sacramento. Do we have any active serial killers in this area? Um, you know, I don't know, but I know we've had, um, like Joseph Nazo, he was the alphabet killer. He had two victims here in Linda. He dumped one in our Marysville Cemetery. Um, he, he's been tried and he's now doing a sentence, but I don't know of anything real active more recently. I, 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 I'm really into the 1800s and early 1900s true oh, crime. Oh yeah, in fact, you know, we got uh, some great pictures of people like uh, the last person hanged in Marysville was mm -hmm. a Chinese man, and it was like right outside one of these buildings. Yeah, I think that was Ben Ah, if I, ben if I, ah, I could have the right. name wrong, but something like that. And he was accused of the racetrack murder of John McDaniel. Yeah, in fact, uh, it was so blatant. Yeah, they did. There was nobody else that could no. have done it. They were, they were, they were 
the total witch hunt, pitchforks, everything. They were ready to hang them right there. They didn't want to. They didn't want to give them a trial. It was so obvious. Yeah. Now we've got, also got the, the wild and woolly past of D Street in Marysville. And I bet you, you know, if you were in this area, I bet you would have been really upset back in the seventies when they tore down all that uh, area south of D Street where Mervins is at now. Yeah, uh, that was a real, real low hanging fruit. Yeah. decade for us in the 70s. Um, yeah, the whole block of uh, what is now known as the Marysville parking lot was just a beautiful area. Um, you know, they, they really did. They just didn't take the value in our historical uh, buildings like they, you know, like they should. Well, that was back in the, in the 1970s. Things were a little bit strange back then. Yeah, they were upgrading just like uh, Sullivan Saddlery. It used to be a really beautiful storefront and in order to modernize you could kind of see this funny looking top that looks like everything's closed off and really there's some beautiful windows up there and everything and that building has a lot of history too. Yeah, Jim just passed away. I know. I'm so, I, yeah. We had a really cool discussion with him. I actually, because I did paranormal investigation in the area since about 2011 and went in there and was trying to score an investigation and he's like, well, I can't really do that because of liabilities because, you know, a lot of these buildings aren't safe. When you say paranormal investigation, is that like a whole process? Do you go in there with recorders just like the television shows? Yeah, and it's a lot more than that. A lot of it is research, too, doing your homework and, and um, listening to people's stories and try to not necessarily prove that there's ghosts, but try to figure out what people are experiencing, see if we've got some um, cognitive issues with the person, the individual, or anything else. It's, it's, a, it's a lot deeper than what you see on TV. Uh, not what kind of drugs they're on, but maybe what kind of drugs they should be on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or what kind, of, what, kind of, what kind of medications they're taking. Uh, but of course, I want to ask you, do you believe in ghosts? Um, I do, but I think the majority of claims out there are uh, people's people's perceptions being, you know, they're not, they can't make sense of what they see, so they immediately turn to the paranormal. Yeah, I, I, my wife's uh, robe was hanging on the hook the other night, and it was kind of uh, low light and everything, and I swear it looked like an alien stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perception is a funny thing, you know. Uh, if you're the one experiencing it, it's got to be true, but, you know, you have to, you have to keep an open mind on both sides. That they're, it, it very well could be explainable, and that, that's what I try to do. Yeah, most part they are explainable, but there's always that percentage yeah. of that is real. I've got to ask you, have you seen a ghost? You know, I, I, I don't know. You don't know? No, because there's so many factors out there. There's environmental factors. There's uh, the human brain is the biggest mystery there is. Um, could I have been fooled by my own perception and of what I was seeing? Or, I mean... Aliens? Who knows? I can really get deep into aliens. <laughs> oh, I, I, I fully believe in aliens uh, because uh, the, the more we learn, the bigger how our universe is. Yeah, it's it's. We're finding planets on a daily basis. Yeah, it's beyond our yeah concepts. And well, it's interesting because you're a space traveler right now. Did you know that? Yeah, absolutely. Because your voice is heading out into the cosmos That's at right. the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, um, what does it take to do a paranormal investigation? Because I, I've got a couple of ghost stories myself. Uh, one time we were sitting in the front room. We heard some uh, chairs scooting around in the dining room. We thought our dogs were in there until we discovered that all our dogs were sitting on our laps. Mm -hmm. We go in there, and all the chairs are turned around and facing away from the table. What, the what time can we be at this location? <laughs> no, it's just be there, experience, keep, you know, don't be distracted by all the equipment that you're using and everything. Be there, experience it. Um, try to figure out every single possibility outside. You always have to debunk the natural before you can get into the supernatural. Do you think animals can see ghosts better than we can? You know, I, don't, I do not know. That's one of the great mysteries. That's the million dollar question I would like to know. <laughs> because we uh, heard our dog barking in the kitchen and he was up on his back legs uh, his name is Pretzel, a little, little dog, is up on his back legs doing this, kind of a scut in the air, like there was somebody there saying, hi, Pretzel, it's okay, Pretzel. And there was nobody there. I'm kind of like taken back to the Poltergeist film where the dog's kind of noticing all these things kind of going on and barking at the chairs and everything else. I don't know. I don't think anybody will ever know in our lifetime whether these things exist or if... Yeah. We, we'll, we will eventually find out when we... 
shuffle off this coil that we live in? We will know. Yeah. I hope so. Now, it's got to be great for you uh, in this area, being a history buff, uh, things like the Marysville Hotel, because you, you posted some pictures yeah. on your, your Facebook page. Well, my primary thing that I love, I mean, I love the paranormal, but my biggest thing is the history and historical, historical preservation here. I'm one of the commissioners for the Marysville Cemetery. Way to go. So I really jump, you know, more than just talking about it, try to get some action and get in there. And I'm actually friends with City Councilman Christopher Pettigo. Yeah. Uh, Ruth Soto, who does a great job with a lot of the buildings here on D Street. She manages a lot of the property. And I was able to go in there because we were actually doing a documentary called Yes, No, Goodbye about Ouija boards. And we needed some good B-roll of some real creepy things. So I was like, hey, I got to throw Marysville in there because it, we really got some cool stuff. And what better creep factor do we have than them? Our hotel right here. That's so true. Doing the Ouija board in the Marysville Hotel? Yep. Wow. That, that, did you uh, experience anything? I do not believe in the Ouija board. I believe in um, idioma, idiomotor effect, which is the brain signals to the muscles and we involuntarily move and we ended up getting with the desired answer that we wish. Well, that's, that's so true. I remember as a kid, my folks got it for me uh, as a Christmas present. You know, yeah. seven-year-old kid getting a, a cool Ouija parents. board. <laughs> yeah, but they they played with it more than we did. Oh, then. <laughs> In fact, yes. they 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 contacted a ghost or a spirit or whatever that said I was going to be the first man on Mars. Oh wow. Well, I, that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> I would love for it. That. Maybe you in that space wrong. travel, maybe your airwaves are hitting. I, I, Who knows? Maybe it was in some <laughs> other way. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, are, are you, uh, do you have a family? I do. I have uh, two wonderful children, 18 and 21. Uh, husband. Wait, wait, wait. You, yeah. you got a twin. You look like you're like 25. <laughs> well, I thank you. I'm 40 and I'm proud of it. So. I, I was going to ask you, but my goodness no. gracious, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Really. Just, you know, getting getting active, getting out there, volunteering makes me feel good. It keeps me young, exploring, never stop exploring. Once you stop doing adventures, I think that's when we start aging. You know, there's some great things on YouTube about urban explorers and yeah. like old movie sets and, and things like that. Uh, the Big Fish. Uh, there's an island somewhere in Louisiana where they made oh, yeah. that town. I would just love to see something like that. We actually, our Marysville Cemetery was in a film. I can't remember the exact name of it, but Eric Estrada was in the film and they did a scene um, with one of the, I think one of the prisoners passed away and they actually did a, a full scene. So I'm really into that too. Urban exploration is one of my favorite things. But, you know, it's really important not to trespass. We don't want anybody to get hurt. I've been in a lot of old buildings and I've seen people get hurt, asbestos, all this stuff. We don't want to get cancer in the name of adventure either. So, you know, ask permission, um, you know, do things the right way. I, I'm all for that. Wonderful. Um, Deviation Diaries. The way I find out found out about it is was a link through Facebook. Uh, nice. Do you have Do you have uh, quite a few followers? Uh, yeah, I think we have around fourteen hundred followers. Um, yeah, it's fun. We have we have a good time. Um, we don't look at it like a job. We look at it like we're just trying to get mutual people that love the history, love the area. We we try to travel as much as we can. Um, the Gold Rush uh, historical places are are our favorite. Um, the yeah, the page is fun. It's, it's just purely hobby. It's purely a good time, and it's to promote historical preservation. And why it's so it important. Is, it's got some great stories in there. Things like that uh, that mummy. Oh yeah, uh, John Corrigan. Yeah, you guys have to check it out. How I, old he, is that guy? He, you know, I I think he died in 1846, but he's perfectly preserved. His eyeballs are even intact, and yeah, people are like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I had I got messages. This is too much. This is too much. It is too much, and that's why I love it. It's. It blew my mind as a child. I, I think it was People Magazine. I was standing in line with my mom and look up and there's this horrid face. And you guys, I mean, you saw it. Yeah. Horrid face. And I thought, oh my God. You know, I always was told in the movies that this stuff's fake. And I, I looked at my mom and I'm like, my God, is that real? And she's like, yes. And oh, I... You were hooked, huh? I was not having it. It was so mortifying for me. And it like just, it just really made an impression on me that, you know, these things are out there and um, history is just really cool. I asked you about your family. What do they think about your uh, predilection for this? Well, my <laughs> living room looks like a seance room. I have Ouija boards on display. I collect them. Um, palmistry. I collect the post-mortem oddities. That I, I have pictures of, I know, it's going to be weird, dead babies in my living room, but they're from the 1800s. The Victorian morning era is really... Um, 
Isn't that amazing? I've seen yeah. some pictures. You posted some pictures of post-mortem things yeah. uh, where they pose people. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's actually some of that they, they have their eyes open. Mm -hmm. They want them to make them look like they're still alive. Life like And they also paint the eyes, the eyelids to make them look like eyes. But, no, my family is just like, oh, my God, yeah, no, no, there it is. There, there's Anna being weird again. But they're used to it. And people, once, they, once they're like, oh, my God, and they realize what it is, they're like, tell me more about this, you know, and they get really into it. And then they're looking on eBay, <laughs> and they're finding these things. They're like, Anna, I just found a post board for $20. I'm like, cool, bid on it, and I'll pay you back. You know, I'm, I imagine you've gone to that, sh that store in San Francisco that they made a show about, the, the oddities. I, I haven't. Yeah. It's on the bucket list. It yeah. is on the bucket list, yeah. Well, one of your friends, Alana, she went there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she met uh, that, that, Darn that. you. <laughs> she met that girl with the long hair. She looks like a Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Mo Wednesday morning. Yes. Morning as in death morning, not Sunday morning. This is a whole subculture, isn't it? It is. And it's really, um, it's caused these antiques that I'm into, like the old quack medicine and all this stuff. It's really gotten to be expensive. But, you know, D Street right here in Marysville has got a great line of uh, antiques. And every once in a while I go in there, I'm like, what's the thing that you don't want to put on the shelves? And I'm like, what? Like, what's just the weirdest thing? You know, I collect embalming bottles from the late 1800s. Um, actually went in and talked to Dan Gray at Lip and Sullivan, and I'm like, hey, can I go upstairs? And he's like, absolutely. Go up there, and I'm like, I collect antique funerary items. He's like, oh, I wish I would have known you 10 years ago. We just got rid of this, 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 this. And, of course, my heart broke right there. But, um, you know, Marionsville is a great place for people like me. It, the stuff's there. You just have to know where to look, and we're hoping by summer, I can get everybody out there on a tour, and we can talk about some true crimes and um, some of the weirder history that we have. Tell down me here. about the true crimes that we've got here, besides the one we talked about yeah. uh, a long time um, You know, B Street, it, 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 Marysville itself was built on blood, sweat, and tears. We live in one of the biggest areas for, I'm so sorry to say it, but Indian massacres. Um, the territory was really well known for highwaymen like Tom Bell and Joaquin Marietta. Oh yeah, the, uh, they still got his head preserved. That's a rumor, but the, I've also been told that his head was destroyed in the 19, what was it, 19 whatever earthquake of San Francisco. Really? So there might be a copycat out there, I don't know, but um, you know, people were getting shot out on the street daily. Black Bart. Black Bart, and we just found out Black Bart may be the guy that's buried out at the um, Marysville Cemetery. This, the, it's looking like it's probably him. You know, the cemetery kind of took a little hit with the with the flooding, and it's good to see, like, the Knights of Columbus are having a corned beef and cabbage dinner tomorrow night at 6 at St. Joseph Hall, with the proceeds going to the historic Catholic cemetery, because it, yeah. there's different portions. There's there Catholic, is. there's the Jewish portion. Yeah, St. Joseph's handles their own cemetery. I'm... I'm one of the commissioners for the city cemetery, which is on the east side of Highway 70. Um, yeah, we did. We, you know, we've had the news out there quite a bit. We did take some flooding. That's something that's historically happened. Vandalisms. I mean, as early as 1851, the cemetery was erected in 1850, 1851. Was the first um, front page paper. Vandalism hits uh, cemetery. Blah blah blah. Um, but. Yeah, we had we we did have a monument tumble, but we have some that are hanging on the edge, and we are doing everything we can with the city to try to get some funding and try to preserve yeah. and keep things from sliding any I, further. I'm glad they got that uh, that band back. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> that was about the time um, I came in. I've been with the, the cemetery out there for about five or five years, I'd say. I uh, I put on the uh, historic fair at the U of Seven Mall for many years. And we have the cemetery commission out there, and we were starting to talk about that. And uh, it was interesting because one of the commissioners were there, and there was uh, just somebody from the public, and I was able to connect them to, and that's how they found out who the vandal was. I just feel yeah. so cool about that that I was part of it. It's weird. It's it's everything's so connected, um, and it <laughs> everything is connected. I like the way you put that. Yeah, my my daughter is actually friends with one of the girlfriends of one of the boys that were out there, and um, you know, it's kind of a story but um, you know I had my kids out there helping out um, Marysville High School Steve White he's really great about oh, yeah, um, he yeah he he gets the kids out there and active and I, and I think that's what's really important and that's why I like this page I'm trying to get the the younger um, crowd and community to see that history is really cool yeah there's all kinds of it. I mean it's not just uh, you know you know, people in suits, you know, and yeah. hats and all that. Now there's some wild and really past. I got a chance to look at the booking book for the Marysville Police from the 1800s because that was a big part of it. It's a huge book, and the names on there, 
and, and the crimes that were listed mm-hmm. were just funny. You know, like people, uh, they busted a, a house of ill repute, I guess you'd call mm-hmm. it, and the names were like Flossie, Bessie, yeah. Trixie. You know. Yeah, those are the characters <laughs> I like. The, the Swale Doves is what they call them. Doves. Um, you know, the, the Troublemakers, uh, what do they say, Way, well-behaved women rarely make history. I love that. I, I love the Troublemakers. The Troublemakers are sometimes what causes change and, um, you know, really kind of lays the foundation for a lot of things that we have nowadays. There's a lot of stuff that they didn't teach us in school that's really amazing besides, you know, of course we got the California missions, which are amazing. I love all that. But, you know, I want to hear about the guys at Alcatraz that actually broke out and they never knew what happened or, Ooh, they got know. some. They got some recent pictures of, uh, of them, possibly them, uh, living down in uh, Guatemala or something. Oh, and yeah. see, if it was me, I'd go straight to Guatemala and I want to talk to them. You know, the guy, I'm just that girl. Um, but Marysville is just absolutely amazing. I'm really proud to be here. What's coming up in uh, your paranormal investigations? You know, I haven't done paranormal investigations since January of last year. I haven't really been doing that. I'm just more kind of doing the urban exploration and the history um, projects we have coming up. Like I said, I, w- I would love to do a tour of D Street and just talk about some of the crazy, you know, the ghost stories or whatever that I've heard over the years and, and the and the crazy crimes. And well, things. you should be a part of the of the history for next year. I w- we were actually a part of it this year. So this was our first year. Amber and I were involved. We were in full, um, you know, the 1800s garb dressed up out there. We did a tour of C Street. We walked people down to Ramirez, and her and I both were dressed up as two soil doves which um, Amber was dressed up as uh, Lola Montez, and I was, I cannot think of her name for the life of me right now, but another um, madam that was really, really like successful. She actually ended up moving down to San Francisco and um, started a business down there and was one of the best brothels in San Francisco. So that tells you she was pretty good at what she did. Yeah, we've got to, you know, think of just Marysville itself, named after a cannibal. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You can get. Uh, I'm telling you, you can you can sit here and talk to me three hours about about our cannibals. Uh, we have some Donner Party members actually buried at Marysville Cemetery, which is another really cool thing. And um, yeah, cannibalism. I've even written. We do blogs. Uh, I've written a little bit about that, and cannibalism was actually pretty prevalent in our history, and people don't want to talk about it. Oh no, but it is part of our history, and uh, also uh, spousal abuse. Oh yeah. Because that was very. It was married to Mr. Kovalog, is that what it was? Right. And he beat her so bad that they, uh, they actually granted the divorce uh, back in the 1800s, and that was hard to come by. Well, a lot of our founders were not good men. Um, many of them promoted, and actually we just talked about it yesterday, um, John Sutter, uh, John Fremont, they really believed in doing head counts on Indian scalps. I mean, the poor Indians, they, they had no chance here. They were, they were paying people $250 a head to... To clear out the land because they didn't want the trouble. Um, but a lot of, a lot of he died. A bro- he died a broke man too. I understand how a lot of them did. Because so. there was a boom and bust. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, Charles Kovalov, kind of an interesting fact. He came to Marysville with ten dollars in his pocket and was able to buy a piece of land, um, and that's how it all started with him. So that's he was one of the first parcels of Marysville that were sold. Ten bucks. For ten a bucks. And look at look at the empire that ended up. I bet she would love it. to have a time machine. Um, you know, I, I really do <laughs> talk about this like all the time that I was just totally born in the wrong era. But of course, I would have probably been hanged because um, I've been the girl, a witch. a witch or a um, you know little Annie Oakley, uh, calamity Jane or something, wearing wearing uh, trousers instead of skirts. You know, I, I, I yeah, I. I would have had no chance in the 1800s, but... <laughs> you sound like a lively young lady. I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, of course, I want, to, I want to make sure that people know how to get involved with Deviation Diaries because uh, it sounds like a great group. Yeah, just basically just, you know, go over to our Facebook. It's the Deviation Diaries or Yuba Setters Deviation Diaries. We're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, anything. Um, you can email us at deviationdiaries at gmail.com. You know, we like to get together and find people who... Are into the same kind of thing, and you know we can share you know, make, ideas. Share ideas and make field trips. And one of the great ones is the fact that they're going to put QR codes on the front of all the historic buildings. Yeah. Uh, the QR codes are for your smartphone. You just scan it, and it'll tell you all the information, the stories about the buildings. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. But okay, don't put great. me out of business because I still want to walk up and down because I. I want a reason to have to wear a bustle. <laughs> <laughs> I 
got one other question that I had got to ask you, but because I'm, I'm not getting a straight answer. Are there Chinese tunnels in Marysville? Absolutely. There are? There are. And I've actually, um, I don't want to say who, where, or anything like that, because I don't want people <laughs> yeah, trying to... see there, that's to, what I'm running into. Yeah, uh, I can't say where, because I don't want to um, break trust, but, you know, we do have a chance that we may be able to get into a, a portion that's safer, and if there is, Amber, and I promise that if we get into any part of this city with... Uh, with any of our officials or anything else that we will definitely record it so everybody can see. We want to share it with everybody. Everything that we find in archives um, that's really interesting, we try to share it. We try to make it user friendly and this is what we're trying to do is make these things available to the public. And I like the fact on your website, you've got uh, well, on the Facebook page, you solicit uh, ghost stories. Tell yeah. us stories of the paranormal. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear them. Yeah, they do. And uh, you know, ghosts sell but that's not really why we do it it's um people people do have experiences and they want to make sense of it they they want to be validated and i've i've heard thousands from people personally their stories and um sometimes i can explain it away sometimes they don't want it explained away but we love to hear it okay well i want to share one more with you all right <laughs> okay we, this was back oh my goodness 30 some odd years ago we were it was, at, it was during the 87 flood we were staying uh, at my in-laws uh, in a spare bedroom and I woke up in the middle of the night just opened my eyes and I saw this man sitting beside the bed staring at my wife just staring down and I just barely opened my eyes and as I opened my eyes he turned and looked at me and just faded into the shadows nice. it, well that's not the end of it I told my in-laws about this the next morning and described what this man looked like what he was wearing he was wearing a red checkered shirt with coat with the overalls and uh that was my wife's grandfather. Wow. He was buried in a red checkered shirt with overalls. There was no way I could have known that. He's like, what are you doing here with her? Uh, well, <laughs> maybe. Uh, he was uh, He was more like, because uh, I understand that uh, she had a special place in his home. So she was, he was there looking out for her. Yeah. And it was just, you know, I'm sitting talking about yeah. the hair standing at the bottoms. Yeah, the, you know, it's kind of funny that you mentioned the floods. Um, a lot of stories came out of the 86 floods of people, um, once they got back into their homes, were having experiences. Actually, my, my ex-in-laws, they began to have a lot of activity in their house. And this is one of the places you asked me if I've seen a ghost. This is one of the places I did have an experience. Yeah. Um, they were given furniture from yard sales, and they say that as soon as they got this one wicker chair, things started to happen in the house. They, they So much so we were not allowed to talk about it but here i am talking about it so if you guys are listening i'm sorry if anything happens because of this but um yeah it's a it's a common thing disturbance uh rebuilding uh renovations and things like that seem to bring up more of these stories oh yeah because uh, the house i was in it was actually it's over 100 years old uh but uh, it was a cabin a miner's cabin and they just built on around it and you know what eventually became my house yeah and there's all kinds of and, and it's not just in the new ones or, or old houses because some of those like the Indian burial grounds you know and things like that and the way they come and come and talk to you yeah one of my biggest questions when I talk to people you know when they want to discuss ghosts is you know why do we always see ghosts that are in the 1800s why, yeah, why? why don't we ever see like one that looks like Madonna or like singing Michael Jackson or moonwalking or something I want to see a ghost that's like dressed in like flannel pajamas <laughs> and a Bon Jovi shirt or something like that, but you don't see that. I don't know why. It's just people's perceptions, I think, that, you know, we think old, we think goes. Yeah, I think there is. Because I would just, like you said, I'd love to have a time machine because I'd go back and I'd, I'd look at the... Uh, I wouldn't, you know, change history just to watch it, to yeah. actually see it. That's how I am. I just feel I'm an observer. I'm a guest, and when I go into these places, I just want to observe. I just want to experience, um, you know, that there is... You know, like beyond this, I, you know, when I go into these places, I be respectful. I'm, I feel like I'm a guest in their home. I'm just there to observe. Are you scared of ghosts? No. Yeah. No, that's me. Me. I'm not either. I've, I've been in some of the scariest places in Nevada and California, and um, I've had some experiences. I had one in Tonopah, Nevada, which is a silver city, um, that really did shake me up. It, 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 it goofed me up for a little bit, um, but no, I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm more. You were in this to start. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I was. I always. 
I still the little girl who looked at the mummy John Torrington on People magazine. You know that there's that excitement of, of, of being spooked. But once I'm there, I don't know. I just feel like I'm in my element. I was sort of like the, the girl from Contact. Uh, <laughs> uh, when she looked up and saw the stars, and she, she said she was hooked. I'm like that. I was hooked on uh, yeah. astronomy for something like that. So, But you're hooked on uh, things that are, well, the, your name says it all, deviation diaries, deviation from the norm. That's, that's what it is. People are like, oh, you're deviant? No. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad, no. it's not a bad term. And um, you know, we're not out there doing anything or promoting anything that's that's yeah, not bad. satanic or no. anything like that. Um, it it's just you have to break away from the most beaten path in order to find these amazing pieces of history. And I guarantee, if you do, you're going to be hooked just like I am. Wonderful. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more out of you in the next couple of years because I think this is going to grow. I think you're going to have to open up a store. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. I, I I've I've got a lot of knowledge in this head of mine and I want to share it with everybody. Write a book. I, I, I keep being told that, but we do have a blog. It's the deviation diaries um, dot blogspot dot com. Yeah. Go check it out. I mean there's a lot of cool stories on there. Wonderful. It's Deviation Diaries. You can find it actually on Facebook too, and that, that's how I found out about it. And I'm tickled to meet you, young lady. It's a very it's been a very great thing. We could sit here and talk for hours but uh yeah. gotta do other things. <laughs> yeah. No I appreciate the invite. I I'm really happy We're to gonna be have here. to have you back. Absolutely, anytime. We are 93Q, your community radio station.